Hey guys, what's up? Lewin here at GarageBand and beyond. Welcome back. So today we're taking a look at the brand new GarageBand that came out yesterday. This is technically GarageBand 10, although I think they skipped like five versions because I believe the previous one was 5.0.2 or something like that. Um, but it was from the old iLife 11 package. So it's been like two and a half years that we've all been sort of waiting for a GarageBand update. So they finally did it. I'm going to answer the first big question out of everybody's mouth so far is, does it run third-party AU plugins? The answer is yes. I figured it out. Yes, it definitely does do that. Um, but it has some really cool new features, new amplifiers, new pedals, um, obviously a whole new look that's semi-familiar. Some of it's very familiar and some of it's totally new. Uh, and I think they're going to be updating this pretty soon and, and there's a couple things that I've already run into some issues so anyway let's talk about the AU plugins thing because this is a big concern for a lot of people so up here in the upper left hand corner you see these four new controls so this is the editor like we're used to um, this is what is this the library this is quick help and then this control right here smart controls if you click on that right and you come down here where it says audio units and you can see I've already loaded in some, but if I click on it, I can find all my own audio units and they've all been itemized by their creators. Oh, thank God for that. In the old days, it was just like one long ass list that you just sort of had to go through and try to find your plugins. Now it's a little more uh, organized or a lot more organized. So that is really great. So yes, third-party AU plugins are working. I will add the only thing on my side that's not working so far is anything from IK Multimedia. Anything and everything from IK Multimedia is coming up. Nope, don't want to work. I've reinstalled it all. I've reauthorized it all. Nothing worked. Um, it did, uh, or I did contact IK Multimedia and let them know that there's an issue. So hopefully they come up with an update soon so we can get this all working on this new thing. Now, one thing that you're seeing here that's different um, is these controls. So this is like a general control of these two things. You can see I have the Slate Digital Virtual Channel and the PSP Warmer on this channel. Um, but if I actually wanted to like see the plugins themselves, I can actually just click on them here and check that out. I can have two open at the same time. Ah, very exciting, I thought. Um, I was really happy about that one. Now, the other thing that I wanted to add quickly, um, when you download the new GarageBand, it is a standalone program, right? So you're not necessarily updating the old GarageBand. You're basically downloading a whole new DAW, you know, um, meaning that your old GarageBand will stay in your applications folder. It just ends up being under the new GarageBand icon as a folder and you open it and it says GarageBand, what is it, 5.0.2 or something like that. Um, but don't worry. So if you do download this, you're going to retain your old one. But be smart and do a fresh backup to your time machine before you download the new one, just in case something goes wrong and it wipes out your old one. Um, you still will have it on your backup. That's my best advice. Now, um, let's look at some new stuff. So the drummer thing is super cool. I have this song here and I haven't, you know, been playing with this very much. I literally downloaded this morning. I've been working with it all day. I really wanted to make a, a video for you guys who are probably sitting there going, oh, should I get it? Because I was. So I figured I would, you know, be the guinea pig for you guys <laughs> and I'll let you know what's working and what's not and what's different and how to find stuff. So anyway, it's again my first day with this thing. Uh, but the drummer thing I think is really interesting. So it, basically what this is is an automatic drummer uh, for lack of a better term. It comes up with what it thinks is, you know, what you want for your drums. It comes up with what it thinks is the best drum part for your song, right? Um, so in this case, I have purchased for $4.99. I got all these different drummers. When you get the new GarageBand, you'll see what I'm talking about when you try to add a new drum track. Um, actually, let me show you. Well, let's just show you, right? So if you add things, you can see I have software instruments, audio, uh, microphone, guitar, or the drummer thing, which has already been added. So you can see it's grayed out. But here's where you add this drummer thing, just like a new channel. And then you select the genre or basically the genre that you think you're in. Then you can choose your different drummers here. I think uh, right out of the gate, it comes with maybe one or two different drummers. I don't know exactly, but for $4.99, you can download all the different drummers from 
the app store. So I did it. I was like, five bucks. Let's do it. Let's see what it's like. Um, the controls are really easy to use. As you can see, we have the old, I don't know, the old sliding ball here. So more loud, more soft, more simple, or more complex on the drum parts. Um, looks like you can add or decrease the number of toms that you're using. Uh, same with kick and snare or how well it follows. And you have fill volume and a swing amount, which I think is really interesting that you can dial it um, a lot more incrementally or less incrementally rather. It's like a little bit more, I guess you would just sort of do it by ear. In the old days, it was like quarter note, eighth note, 16th note, on and on, uh, swing control. So it was always, it was sort of rigid. Anyway, this has a nice, you know, you can manipulate it a little bit more so you get a little more specialized swing. Um, but anyway, you want to hear it? Let's listen to it. I'm going to put you in, in a section of this song where there's a break. So you hear, you will hear that it added its own drum fill. So check this out. Okay, well, I've been playing with it a little bit, so it wasn't exactly a fill, but it was like a brap on the on the snare right before everything came in. Um, <laughs> I'm still playing with this thing and learning how it works. That was not the best demo I've ever done right there, but it did, I did play with this thing for a while, and it seems to be adding fills where it thinks it should put fills. Um, it's cool. It's really, really cool. Uh, I have to play with it more. Again, this is my first real look with this thing, and I'm only playing with it with, for one day, so. <laughs> Anyway, you guys, um, the next thing I wanted to look at was the amplifiers and stuff because there's some super cool new stuff in here. Um, again, we're going back up to the smart controls button in the upper left-hand corner. And so now here are your controls. So this is the amp control. And let's take a look at this. So a bunch of new amplifiers, as you can see. I'll just sort of leave this open um, it doesn't seem to be changing the icon or the actual, well, there it is. Now it did it. <laughs> um, okay. When I was switching before, it didn't switch through, but I don't know why it's doing it now. But anyway, there's not a whole bunch to look at here. There's just a, a lot of new amplifiers to look at. That's that. Um, models. Here's the amps themselves. A bunch of different things in here to look at. And then a bunch of new cabinets, which I was very happy about. Um, that they're sort of doing this more like Amplitube, where you have the separate head, separate amp, and a separate cabinet. Makes it a little bit more versatile when you're trying to find an awesome guitar tone. Um, so this is really cool. I haven't actually played through any of these sounds yet, but I've looked at the stuff. And um, here, let's look at the pedals, because there's a bunch of new ones. You can see I have already tried <laughs> loading up the whammy pedal. Ha ha! It's the Digitech whammy pedal or a copy of, which I love that effect. If any of you have watched my pedal board videos, you know the whammy and I are very good friends. This Roswell ringer thing seems pretty interesting. Um, there's lots of interesting looking effects in here. You know, I will just sort of show you what I think is cool. If I could get this thing out of here. Here we go. Um, here's this. What's this? Happy face fuzz. Double Dragon, Turbo Burner, Monster Fuzz, Phase 4. Look, there's a lot of new things in the effect pedal section. Um, it's cool. I'm curious. Oh, Spin Box. This was cool. This was looks cool. Because I'm sh assuming, just by the way it looks, is this is a, a Leslie simulator, which is awesome. I think this should be very cool because I've always been very impressed with Apple's emulation of a Leslie speaker. If you don't know what a Leslie speaker is, it's literally a speaker that spins around. At least the horn spins around. And uh, then at the bottom, the baffle spins around. Anyway, it's a spinning speaker and it's a really unique sound. Cool thing. Um, so that's cool. Spring reverb right here. Pretty cool. I don't know. Lots of cool new things in the effects also. So you guys, please leave comments below. Um, like I said before, I came multimedia is the only thing I have found that doesn't work yet for third-party audio unit plugins. If there are anything else that you guys have discovered that's not working, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. Um, if you have questions, comments below. But always and more frequently, I'm on top of what's going on on the Facebook page. It's hard for me to keep up with all the comments on every video, you guys. I'm only one guy. Um, and sometimes you guys get mad if I don't respond immediately. So sorry. 
I have a lot of videos and a lot of viewers and a lot of subscribers, but if you really want to be part of the discussion, get over to the GarageBand and Beyond Facebook page because that's something that I'm on a lot more often and it's easier for me because it's just one thing. So that's it. Um, that's it for now. This is the overlook of the GarageBand 10. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have questions, below or Facebook. Talk to you soon. Later.